Hello, Dan DeVoe here, and in this video I'd like to introduce uh, a toy slash puzzle slash game that I've been uh, designing and developing in memory of my father, Harold DeVoe, who uh, passed away this past year. Dad's do-it-yourself attitude both inspired and enabled this project. He loved puzzles and games of many types, and uh, Christmas 2021 would have been his 74th birthday, so happy birthday, Dad, and Merry Christmas. This is for you. The puzzle, it's a tiling game, um, and there are only two shapes of tiles, a thin-shaped rhombus and a thick-shaped rhombus, and they uh, fit together in the standard way like your checkerboard tile does, but also have many more options in terms of how they fit together with one another to create more intricate patterns, and in fact, the, uh, the most possibly the most interesting property of them is that they can actually be put together in such a way to tile the plane completely without leaving any gaps, yet never repeating. And uh, that's sort of how I first learned about them and kind of how they ended up as part of this project. Um, so how do, you, how do you do that? How do you make them uh, tile in such a way that they never repeat? Well, on the opposite side of the tiles, I have printed a pattern that will help uh, allow you to tile in a uh, aperiodic manner. All of, the, uh, all of the thick tiles have the same pattern on them, all of the thin tiles have the same pattern on them, so there's, only, there's really only two, um, two tiles that you're working with here, two, two shapes, two matching patterns that you're working with here. If it, as you can see, the thick tile already has a pentagon on it. That's one of the shapes that features prominently in this uh, tiling pattern. And then to, uh, to put the, the tiles together so that they will form this uh, non-repeating pattern, you match up lines and colors on adjacent tiles. You can see we've also we've formed another pentagon here. And... Uh, um, besides pentagons, because they don't... They don't fit together perfectly, um, like uh, hexagons do, for example. We have to have some other shapes that fill in the gaps between the two. So one of those is a diamond, which we can see over here. Always formed in the same way, two thick tiles and a thin. And you can see it's surrounded by pentagons. Um, we also have another shape, a crown which is sort of like three-fifths of a five-pointed star. Again, always formed in the same way, three thick tiles and two thin. And again, surrounded by pentagons, as you can see, these also dark uh, colored pentagons. We can complete those we can, in several ways. Two thin tiles and a thick tile makes a pentagon. One thin tile and three thick tiles makes a pentagon. And if we keep going, five thick tiles also makes a pentagon. The final shape in the set is a five-pointed star. These are formed in also in several different ways, either out of five thick tiles, or any two of the points can be replaced by two thin tiles. And they must not be adjacent. And the reason that they can't be adjacent is if we do that, we end up with a place where we can't play a tile. And that's the sort of only other secret involved in how to make this tiling happen, right? Right here, nothing will fit there to form a shape that's part of the set. It's not a pentagon, not a diamond, not a crown, not a star. So this is forbidden, not allowed as part of the Penrose tiling. And there we have it. Um, one other thing you'll notice is that you start to see other patterns forming as you tile further. Here you can see a ten, regular 10-sided figure or a decagon, which is what I've named the game after. And surrounding that is a ring of 10 pentagons, which, uh, which I've sort of affectionately named the Penrose. <clears throat> and if you... Uh, 
keep tiling and keep tiling, you'll find that you can sort of go infinite, infinitely far without, uh, without being stopped as long as you follow the, uh, the rules that I've been uh, explaining. And uh, it's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle, but instead of having a very specific picture that you're trying to form, you end up with a ever-changing, beautiful pattern. Um, if you find that it's not challenging enough, I find it very meditative to, to just make a tiling. But if you start to find it boring, you can always flip it back over and try to create the Penrose tiling using without using the matching patterns on this side. Or just uh, play with the tiles, put them together in interesting ways and enjoy them. And finally, I've been developing a game, which uh, you saw on the title card, Decagon the Game. Uh, to be played with these tiles, which I will introduce in another video, which I'll link below. I'll also put some links to uh, tiling theory and other interesting stuff that uh, was instrumental in the development of this project. So, uh, once again, um, thanks for everything, Dad, and uh, have a good day.